What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my Twisted Life and TV. I'm Poetry. My fro is off, man. It's like not centered properly. Anywho, this is Married at First Sight, episode four. This is the night of the weddings. And this is the, the episode that really got me to see who Alyssa and Lindsay, their true colors, <laughs> came shining through this episode and not in a good way. Um, so on the wedding night, you know, we see if the couples are going to consummate the marriage. It's like a big thing to see whether or not they're going to consummate the marriage. Um, some people look at it like, okay, we married. But others like, I don't know you. I know we just legally got married, but it's on paper as of right now. We still haven't, we don't even know each other's last name for real. You know what I'm saying? So having sex with you right now may not be what I want to do. And it may like fuck up the vibe, the flow, the growth of the marriage. So anyway, I'm going to jump right into it because Married at First Sight, these episodes too fucking long. An hour and a half, two hours, they too fucking long. Let's, let's break it down. Let's break it down to some 50 minute shows, hour show or something. But okay. Um... <clears throat> Last last recap, I was talking about Elijah Wine and his dirty ass draws. They definitely had him take that scene over again. Because when they first showed him, they showed him jumping on a bed. He had his blue boxes on and they had some stainage, right? Then the next time we saw him, he had these gray shorts over it. And then they showed us in this particular episode, him jumping on the bed the same way he did with the blue boxes on. But he had on the gray shorts over the boxes. Okay. Anyway, they had him tape it over again. Now, those boxes may have been washed, okay, but they are stained. This is your wedding day to a woman you don't fucking know. And you come into the night with stained drawers on. I'm so disappointed in you, Mr. Ladies Man. And I, you just, like you don't have any care. She don't get these stained, dirty ass drawers. It just made my soul cringe, right? Um, I still think that Elijah Wan is here just to be on a reality TV show. The way that my fro is not, is like leaning, is really throwing me out. I'm asleep. I have to rest my voice in between videos, so I've been kind of asleep. But it's really throwing me off. I hope um, that. I'm wrong about Elijah Wine. I just don't feel like I am. I thought I was I was hoping I was gonna be wrong about Alyssa and there I wasn't. My initial feelings about Lindsay. Girl. Okay, so anyway, he says that he hopes that um this marriage is gonna be longer than the process. Which is how he basically views it. This is just a trial run. And you know, after the eight weeks oh, only these eight weeks matter in his mind and hopefully we can keep it together afterwards and Tina's like what you mean Tina's like what you mean of course we gonna stay married after the dog process this is a marriage I mean a wife right this is the real deal for her in her eyes so we go to Lindsay and Mark I am liking their comfortability with one another um, a little bit more however I think that Mark as genuine and as he can be is still putting on for the cameras as well. He's treating Lindsay with a long hand a spoon, trying to make sure that she don't make a fool out of herself and embarrass him on TV too. That's where I see Mark is at in this position. But I still think that Mark has some reservations about Lindsay and who she is. I don't see this attraction that they talk about they have with one another. I don't see it at all. Mm -mm. I just think they are both, they can muster up care they could put on um, the act to say that they are attracted to each other so they can get through this doggone marriage, you know what I'm saying? Um, they could build an interest in one another to a point. Yeah. Um, I see them as cool. That's what I see them as right now. I ain't even trip off the fact that she was smudging the room. <laughs> but putting that doggone thermostat on 80 degrees, we gonna fight about that girl. You're like, it's getting hot in here. What the fuck is going on? You know what I'm saying? That was that was that was inconsiderate as fuck. Okay, but speaking of um fighting, I have got to mention last episode how Jasmina Pops was like, look here, don't let Jasmina bully you. Okay. But you don't bully her either, because then you have to answer to me. 
and her, Kim was like, uh, no, Jasmine was saying, don't listen to him. My dad thinks that I'm bossy, you know. She says it's not that she's bossy, but she dated a guy before who wouldn't argue with her. And I see the importance of having an argument because you need to know how to do conflict resolution. If one person is shut down all the time and won't communicate back with you, um, then that's not helping the situation. The argument is not necessarily a fight, you understand what I'm saying? But hell, he probably listened to Step Pop's advice because remember, he told Michael, don't say shit. So maybe that's what he was doing too. Don't say shit. Mm -mm. Well, anyway, St Steve. I just simply love the ring pop proposal, right? He got, he brought her a ring pop, got down on one knee and proposed to her again. Of course she said yes, that was so cute. It was so adorable, right? But I, I, I wonder at the same time with being cute and adorable, is it also showing his frugalness? I know I keep hearing people with different uh, uh, YouTubers say, he gotta have some money in order to you know, be able to, to live like he's living. You know, he is still doing freelance work. But I really think that Steve is doing the bare minimum. If you're taking off on a road trip and you're living out of your car, showering at the gas station, you ain't doing, you, it ain't like you, you, you ain't save no buku bucks for that. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, probably was fast fooding it the whole time. Trust me, he wasn't out there doing no gourmet meals. He wasn't doing that. But anywho, um, I do, I say the little ring pop. I, I do appreciate that. It's so cute. The kid and me really enjoyed it. She enjoyed it too. Um, it made her smile. You know, it's just, I really appreciate them. Steve ready to smash too. He's really attracted to his wife. Um, but she ain't on that page yet. Like, mm -mm. I don't even think that she really understands if he is attracted to her. Because he's trying to be so reserved, so pulled back. Uh, she isn't sure at this moment what he really feels. Um, but I still say, you know, Lindsay and, and um, Lindsay said that Noy would be the first one to have sex. I'm still banking it on being Lindsay at first if Mark, if Mark don't stop her. Like I said, I don't know. I don't, I don't see the attraction between Mark and Lindsay. I don't. Anyway, I just heard it. I heard his words. Chris is still trying to figure out what's wrong with Alyssa. She, she's a, a narcissist. That's what's wrong with Alyssa. She won't share with him what's going on and why she's feeling the way she's feeling. He asked her, you "No, know, did somebody say something to you to upset you? Can we talk about it? She's like, no, let's wait to heads get cooler first. And Chris is baffled. Like, who head need to be cool? Why your head is hot right now? Let me know, you know what I'm saying? Everybody is waking up next to their spouses, having breakfast together, everybody except for them. Because they didn't even sleep in the same damn room, right? You know, he said that he finally convinced her to have a conversation at 2.30 in the damn morning. She didn't want to have a conversation with cameras on. That's because Alyssa does not want to be caught on camera saying the mean shit that she says. That's what the fuck that is. That's all it is. She wants to be presented to America as this um, perfect little princess. And the victim in so many words. Because every time she's put to the test, put, you know, every time that she walks away. Because we're going to portray her. She's going to be portrayed incorrectly by the cameras being there. Okay. Um, but all last night. He was saying that it was something that was said. Or she was saying there was something that was said that really bothered her and I'm like be honest woman because right now you only tell a half truth Chris is like so what is it that you want to do right are we calling it quits right now or what what's going on Lindsay say well I just want to stay on she want to stay on TV you know that's what I'm picking up I just want to go through the process and maybe the things will come together and maybe this and maybe that. I think we should go as far as we can but she already know she don't want to do nothing with this man why waste his time Go ahead and get this marriage to know. This is not a trial period. Why drag this out for eight weeks to decision day? Because she want to stay on TV. That's what that is. Okay. So now it's time to meet the families. Michael's sister tell Jasmine about how she can he can see the worst 
and, and, and something. And that usually comes first. Um, that way he won't be disappointed. Um, well, who else was saying that? Was that on Spider-Man? Zendaya Carey, MJ? She was like, you know, I look for the worst and something to happen. So that way when disappointment comes that I won't be disappointed. Yeah, that's how Michael carries through life as well. Um, Jasmina shares that she's never had a relationship that wasn't long distance. So her living with somebody and being around her boo thing all the time, oh, that's going to be an adjustment. That's going to cause some problems. She going to realize how much she value her space, her me time. Now she has to share that time. She keeps saying that she wants somebody who's going to be around. And I understand what her word is saying. She wants somebody to be around because she's always had somebody that was far off in another state. Now they write her with you all the time. That's going to be an adjustment, Jasmine. I don't even understand if you realize that. Okay. Um, I, you know what? Now I think about it. The last few people that I've actually been in relationships with, they were long distance as well. I don't even know if I, knew how, I know how to like be in the same space with somebody that I'm dating right here with me. The last guy I was with, he was in and out of town, you know, because he was a Olympic athlete. So he was in and out of town, running all over, whatever, 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 for track club, whatever, back and forth to Canada, which was his home, um, where he was a citizen. He was homeless from the islands. And yeah, so when we actually got in each other's space, it was like awkward. Unless we was having sex, it was awkward as hell. Jasmine gonna have an issue. If you ain't never been with somebody that's gonna be around you 24-7, you might enjoy those little times that he away at work. I'm just saying, girl. I'm just saying. Be careful what you ask for because you just might get it. You just might get it. But anyway, um, those loyalty, the, lo the loyalty has always been tested in long distance relationships. So her trust factor is really not there. Now I understand why she really don't you know. She put her heart into these men and they long distance and she feel like if she can learn if she can play yeah her trust the loyalty her trust factor is gone it's gone okay so as far as michael he said he's never had a male figure in his life other than his older brother says all the women in his life they have taught him how to be a good man for a woman but now how to be a husband he's never had an example of what that looks like and jasmine is on the same thing she hasn't had an example of much of an example of uh what a healthy relationship looks like from her biological parents, from her stepmom Kim and her new husband. Yeah, she could see it there, but you know, she look at where she came from, and that that adds a seed of doubt or mistrust or you know, I can't think of my choice of words right now. I still got COVID brain, um, so that that adds some confusion and doubt and, and lack of understanding on how this is supposed to work, um, but. I just love how these two families, Michael and Jasmine and his family, communicate with one another. Um, they, when Michael sits and talks to her family, when she sits and talks to his sisters, they actually listen to what the other party is saying and they take it in and see how they can apply or adapt or adjust to make sure that they are doing what they need to do to make this marriage work. Like, Michael is very aware that Jasmina's family is protective of her. Don't hurt they baby. He's like, I know I'm going to have to prove myself because mama don't trust me. I know it. And, um, I don't know. I'm kind of waiting for these, these vulnerable conversations between these two to see how it's going to work out or play out for them. Well, Steve's dad tells Noy, my son is a vagabond, okay? He just wants to travel. His choice of words to describe him says to me that Steve is not trying to work. Okay, Noy's response seemed naive at the surface, but she says it's something that we really haven't discussed. Um, but when we do, you know, I'm confident that we'll be on the same page. I appreciated that. In other words, she's saying, you know, I understand what you're saying. I hear you. But let me work on that with my husband, okay? It's not something I really want to discuss with y'all right now because me and him ain't discussed it. Um, I'm quite sure her mama's going to have something to say, baby, though. So Steve meets with Noy's mom, dad, 
and sister and brother Michael, who is now sister Michael, sister Sriracha today. But I'm telling you, Noise brother gives me all the life, whether he's in drag or not. When he's Sriracha, baby, he came through. Okay, all the life. I kept calling Michael uh, her friend at the wedding. I think, and I meant to say it's her brother. Hopefully, I corrected myself. You know, she came in dressed in drag today, and she was like, you know what, I'm just trying to gauge how Steve is going to react. And I don't know if they noticed, but uh, at least one of Steve's brother is probably a she too. I'm just saying. At least one of them brothers is probably a she. Anywho, I thought that Noy's mama was going to be the drill instructor. Mm -mm. But Sriracha, honey, turn the hell up. Okay, what's your financial plan? What's your financial plans when you're considering having kids? What is it that you want out of life? In other words, how are you going to provide for a family which includes my sister? Okay? We know what she wants and she needs out of life. We've, we've heard her say what causes her fear and concern. How are you going to secure that position in her life, right? And not having a plan, that's not going to work, bro. You're 38 years old. You're too fucking old for this. You're too fucking old. Um... I don't know why I thought Steve was much younger. I know I said his age in the first video, but I still, my brain was just thinking he was much younger. Anyway, we go over to Mark and um, Lindsay. Mark's friends think Lindsay is exactly what he needs. Like she is a live wire and she's gonna pretty much outshine Mark because Mark has always been the live wires group and she seems to calm him down, like I said. He can't be on 10 because she always on 10. And the the friends and family is like, this is exactly what he needs. It's almost like they're saying, oh, he done met his match. Finally getting a taste of his own medicine. That's what I saw from these friends, right? Because um, Lindsay's family is like, bro, we're going to pray for you. You know, they being real. We're going to pray for you. She is a bit fucking much. And that's our sister. We love her. That's my daughter. I love her. She's a bit fucking much. Okay. Anywho. Chris meets with Alyssa's family, and I know they're thinking, well, I'll be damned. She is scaring him off already. They tried to convince him to hang in there. I'm like, convince her. Convince her not to be the brat. Convince her not to be the narcissist. Convince her not to be the rude, disrespectful ass lady that she is. Don't tell the victim to ride it out. Tell the oppressor to change her damn ways. Okay? I think um, her mom wants Chris around to soften Alyssa up or wants him around to take the brunt off of her. Maybe if she got a man in her life. You know how people think you uh, the women are so hardcore because they ain't got no man. They need a man in their life to soften them up. I think that's what her mama thinks too. She terrified of her daughter. I see it. I feel it. She's terrified of her. Everybody walking on pins and needles when it comes to Alyssa. And I could tell and Chris is saying, you know, if she's at least 1% invested into staying in this marriage, then he's willing to give it a chance. So you're going to be giving the other 99 while she's giving 1%. That's that's not balanced. That's not smart. That's not smart at all. Alyssa wants to hear what she wants to hear. Okay. When they had the conversation with the friends, I didn't think that the friends were throwing him under the bus. I thought that they was trying to give her a bit of understanding. If you if he comes off this way to you just a little bit, just understand he's not trying to be condescending. But she took it as, no, he's condescending. That, no, he's going to put his job before you. Well, she said she's going to put the damn dogs before him. The fuck? Okay? Basically, what I got from his friends is that he's very dedicated to his career. It took him a while to get there. He's very career driven. But she hears, I'm not going to be his priority. Yeah. And like I said, I don't know why when they, when the family did their letter and they said, you ain't going to be her priority. She's going to put the dog before you. Why that? You basically saying the same shit, Alyssa. They basically saying the same shit. Okay. Anyway. Elijah Wan, he had on those same gray shorts that he put over the blue boxes the night before. And he went to go meet with Katina's family. <sighs> he spiced together the same dirty drawers on. Because it was all part of his outfit for the next day. Elijah Wan didn't bring many clothes. He didn't bring many clothes. He picked out a, one set of drawers, one set of shorts, one set of t-shirts. All for the same week, you know. Um, I think he said he was a traveler. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. <laughs> 
Um, Cause travelers, people that travel, we go buy new shit every time we go some goddamn whore. I don't know why we do it. Every time we go somewhere, probably because we don't want to be in the same pictures and the same outfits that we was in in the last pictures the last time we went traveling somewhere. Anyway, um, I was so happy with Jelani, Katina's homeboy, calling him out on his shit. Everything that Jelani was feeling about Elijah Wine was exactly how I was feeling about Elijah Wine as well. Um, he like, so you don't have a problem getting women. Um, so either you really trust the experts or you have an ulterior motive here to be a reality TV star. That's what I say here, okay? And I was like, an ulterior motive for 500, Alex, okay? Elijah one is like, you know what? I, I, I figured, let me try something different. And again, his boy's like, try something different. This is a marriage. This is not, again, like a trial period. Don't play with my damn friend. I don't understand that you. I don't think you understand the gravity of what you are doing here. Elijah Wine took offense to that. You know, he don't like being checked by another man because he thinks he's an alpha man, and now he's being challenged by somebody who is very, who's standing in their shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, so he kind of cut him off. Was like, yeah, yeah, I get you, bro. I understand. I get you. I get you. I get you. And and I really do think that he understood. He just didn't like being challenged by him. Um, but bro was like, I wasn't feeling his BS answers, and he he just trying to get shine. And I think this is going to be a problem because Jelani is Katina's best friend, the brother that she leans on for support and advice. And her husband is going to have conflict with her best friend. That's going to be a problem there. That's going to be a problem. It's going to be a problem for Elijah Wine. He's going to be one. Who was that one couple? When we had that one couple that, uh, the girl was really cool with the best friend and then he was on the rooftop and he was questioning him, challenging him about whether or not he had feelings for her and why you involved in her life and you don't need to be around her. You don't need to hang around her like that no more because I'm here. She don't need you in her life like that no more because I'm here. That's the feeling. That's the vibe I'm getting from Elijah Wine. I forgot which. Was that season nine? I think it was. That couple was just a wreck. I don't even think they stay together. If they are, I'm very shocked. Okay, anyway, afterwards, Michael says that he got a lot of convincing to do on his part. Jasmina said, you know what, I'm in like friend with his sisters, you know what I'm saying? Lindsay thought that Mark's friend was cool as fuck. And Mark says Lindsay's fam gave her the tools, gave him the tools that he needed to rear her in. They even gave him a, uh, a taboo button. It says no. It says no in 15 different ways. And uh, she was like, well, can I use it too? No. Mm-mm. Um... Steve says Sriracha came down really hard on him. But surprisingly, what her issue is, is the exact same thing that Steve's dad is concerned about. Okay? You ain't got no damn job, man. That's been my biggest concern as well. And Nor so Nora was like, okay, so what is your plan? He said something along the lines of we need to talk about that to see what our goals are and see if we're if getting a full-time job or not is even gonna be a concern. Bruh, it's a concern. That's why she's talk, bringing it up now. And this is the point where y'all talk about it. Because you, you think that Sriracha was coming down hard on you for those uh, those questions. But again, she just sat there and had the same conversation with your daddy. It's a concern from all, for all parties involved. And I'm asking you right now, what is your plan? And you bullshitting me. You bullshitting me. So again, it's bringing me back to the fact that I'm having concern with Steve. Okay, where was I at? Where was I at? Where was I at? Where was I at? Steve like his freedom. He don't want to give up his freedom of doing nothing. You know what I'm saying? Um, Katina, she was cool with uh, Cheryl making um, her Elijah Wines cheerleader. But she really didn't. Elijah Wines said he didn't learn nothing from her friends. Because he's closed off. He's closed minded for what they had to say and what they had to offer. He liked the the, the, uh, the girlfriends because that's all they want to know about whether or not they fucked and their sexual chemistry. And Jelani is the one who's trying to get deeper. Now, she, he don't like Jelani. So, anyway, um, and I, I, from what they showed us, he really didn't ask any questions about her. Okay? Um, he came back and told Katina that he thinks Jelani is a bad judge of character. Like I said, that's going to be an issue. Because Katina is like, that's who I trust. I lean into his advice. 
So you basically just told her, you you don't think whatever Jelani said is trustworthy, that his judgment is off. And so when she takes his advice, then she making bad decisions. That's what basically what she said. That's not a good thing. And she was like, you know what, I, I trust him. I trust Jelani. And, you know, I hear you. I'm listening to you. I'm going to take what you said. I'm going to put it in my pocket for now. It's going to come out that pocket real quick. Watch. Well, they off the Puerto Rico. Um, Lindsay has been the only one that's been to Puerto Rico. I personally love San Juan, Puerto Rico. I've only been once. Or did I go twice? I've been once. And I loved it. I loved it. I need to go back. I owe the money on a speed ticket though. Or is it a parking ticket? It was a parking ticket. I owe the money. I think $114. Yeah. Anyway. Um, and so... Chris asked Alyssa, how does she feel about going on a trip with him? And then he threw in and the other couples. She was like, I'm happy to see the other couples get to know them, hang around him. Chris, when you gonna start being honest about with her about how she making you feel, okay? This marriage is not all about her. Uh, he like, you know, let's remove all the outside noise and spend some time to get to know each other. She was like, yeah, sure. We'll see. That ain't finna happen. <laughs> and her lip fillers, I say, is working my god dog on nerves, y'all. Oh my goodness. Does she pump them in her every dog in the morning? Or she doing that suction tip, the, the one that, you know, the Kardashian chick does, the suction cup thing to make her lips swell up every damn morning? It's annoying. And oh, okay. Everything that he suggests, let's go explore together. I don't like to explore. Or well, we can go shopping. Yeah, I don't want to do that. I'd rather spend time on the beach. He said, fine, we could go chill on the beach then. And. <sighs> I'm surprised she didn't say, nah, I'd rather be by myself. But th but that's what she meant. That's what she meant. She said to us, everything that he does rubs her the wrong way. If that's the way you feel, that's how you feel when you could care less about somebody. Stop wasting this man's time. Funny thing is, his willingness to please her is getting on her nerves too. And I told y'all that Chris is presenting himself as a yes man. Everything that can be wrong, well, I could just do that. I could do that. I, you know, I, he, he's a yes man, and she that she keep picking up on that as well. That yes, your attitude is not appealing in the least bit. Um, but like I said, she don't want to do anything with him anyway. She's like, I want to go to the beach solo without him. He can go do some other stuff. This is your fucking husband on your fucking honeymoon. Why would he be traipsing off by his damn self? Alyssa is here for the free trips and the meals. That is what she's here for. She here for the, I think she got the wedding dress by the show. Got the ring from the show. That's what she's here for. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. But she's like, every time I suggest something, he be like, yeah, I can do that too. I can do that too. I can do that too. He can still say yes to everything I say though. That's annoying as fuck. And yes, that's what he's going to do. So, okay, Michael and Jasmina. <clears throat> they ended up dressing alike for the plane ride. Chemistry, chemistry, chemistry between these two. Oh, Y'all haters that say they not connecting. When I'm right, I'm right. When I'm right, I'm right. I'm only wrong 2.3, 4, 5, 6, 7 percent of the time. But anyway, so they're getting off the plane. Alyssa walks right by Chris, man. Right by him. Man, you cannot tell me that she is still like it. She's, the way Chris is saying is that if she's smiling at me, I'm still in. And I'm still willing to give it a try. Why, sir? Why? Why are you doing this to yourself? Why are you allowing yourself to be abused? Anyway, apparently Lindsay and Mark, they've out isolated themselves. A situation popped off. Lindsay got on a bus and gave everybody a cultural sensitivity speech, apparently. Uh, well, the, not everybody, directly Olajuwon and Katina. Um, she had asked him about whether or not he could speak Spanish or what have you. And she said, well, we should all speak Spanish while we're here. Elijah Wine and Katina, like, we grown as fuck. We speak how we want to speak, right? Lindsay basically carrying the situation. She carrying the moment. Um, I, I, I was like, what the fuck is going on? How you going to come and tell these people what language they need to speak? Now, I know for myself, when I go to foreign countries, I try to speak their language. But you ain't going to tell me that I have to. You know what I'm saying? You, you ain't gonna tell me that I have to. Not somebody that's coming to on the trip with me. I'm gonna try because that's what I wanna do on my own, okay? But you ain't gonna tell me, well, we gotta speak Spanish because we in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico 
can speak English too. God dog on me. Anywho, um, according to Katina, uh, as she was walking away, Lindsay said that she was going to fight Olajuwon. And Katina turned the fuck up because what we're not going to do is talk shit to my husband. Dirty draws and all. That's not what we're going to do. She said, keep that bitch away from her, right? Now, Lindsay, we show her, and she looks like she want to cry. Um, and I think it's because she likes Elijah Wan. She's attracted to Elijah Wan. Um, and now she, I guess, felt that she was going to have this banter back and forth with him. And he wasn't fucking playing that. But now she feels like a victim. Oh, my goodness. He got aggressive with me. I can't stand a motherfucker to come up here, say some shit that's off-putting. And then when somebody come back and check your ass, now you the victim. I can't believe he talked to me that way. He raised up and got aggressive. Karen, if you don't sit your motherfucking ass down, sit it, sit down, sit down. Okay. Mark was like, look her, let's not let this ruin our fucking trip. Let Lindsay tell it. She felt that they were all joking and then temperatures got raised and one of the husbands got aggressive and she said, as a joke, would you want to fight me? <laughs> Bitch. Those fighting words right there to me, okay? That's fighting words right there to me. And he apparently posted up on her. Very different versions of the story. And I'm, I'm keen to believe Elijah Wan and Katina in this moment. Um, <clears throat> but Mark, being the man that he is, did his thing. He tried to make sure she was calm, told her to get a shower, and he ended up taking a moment to herself. You need a moment. And he's going to go down there and try to resolve things. Okay, I understand that Mark talked to Elijah Wan man to man, okay? Um, and I was hoping that he wasn't going to come down there and make excuses for her, which he didn't. Um, but speaking of attention, speaking of tension, Alyssa is trying to hang tight to Katina and Elijah Wan and Jasmine and Michael. Uh, she don't like Lindsay at all. But all the while, her husband is just out here like a little lost puppy. Um, you know... Everybody else sees what's going on between them, but they all too scared to say something. And then Mark came down and joined them. And they know they, he didn't pull no punches. He came down and got straight to the point. He's like, you know, I want to apologize for my team. I appreciated that. You know, not from just my wife, but my team. Because we, we, we right here. We all got buttons. We all on different pages. But let's try to forgive and learn to be at peace with each other while we're on this trip. You know what I'm saying? Can we at least try to get past this moment right now? Um... And they had already been discussing it downstairs because everybody was trying to get an understanding of what really went on, what happened. And Katina's still feeling salty. She's like, she ain't, be, she ain't my sis, she ain't my friend. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, keep her ass away from me. Uh, I'll be cordial, but we don't need to hang out for a long period of time because she rubs me the wrong way. And I was first I was like, Katina, you're being kind of petty right now. But then I kind of understand. Because Jasmine is like, I ain't got to have this shit. This is my honeymoon. This is my honeymoon. Why have you let this bitch ruin my goddamn honeymoon? That's basically what's going on. So... I'm so glad that Chris finally called Alyssa out on her shit because she's a manipulative narcissist and there's, there's no win with her. Um, call it quits and go home, Chris. That's what you need to do. Because right now, she gaslighting you and from what I can see, the show producers are trying to convince you to stay on here just for airtime and ratings. Take your ass home. Okay? Take your ass home. Um, and there was a whole lot of more shit that happened after this episode, it was just sh sh long. This, this, this is long as hell, and I'm running out of time on this video anyway. And I'll try to catch up more um, on the next episode and so hopefully be on track too as well. There was a, uh, if y'all not watching the after party with Keisha Knight William, watch the after party. If not for this particular, uh, at least for this particular episode, because Keisha tried to check or call Alyssa out on her bullshit. You know, about how everything is about her and how she's not really listening to what her husband is saying. And, you know, she keeps saying that Chris was disrespectful to her. But how was he being disrespectful? Let us know. You know, Keisha was really being nice and gentle, I thought. And Alyssa got him walked off. She walked off the set. Bye, girl, bye. Fuck. I don't even know why we going to keep her on her this whole fucking season. I really don't. But, yeah, if there's anything else that y'all really want to discuss, drop it down in the comment section. Again, I do not discuss spoilers so anything that happens in the sneak peek for next week's episode that's not up for discussion in this video <laughs> we're gonna wait till that doggone episode airs and talk about that then like comment share subscribe thank you for being here thank you for being patient
Peace out.